Now, look, worry away from this coronavirus and, and back to drought and bushfires. The minister in charge is supposed to be a little proud. All he can do is speak in jargon. He's the Minister for Disaster Relief. Try this for a sample the other day as we continue to roll through this and we see the implications. We're going to make sure our response is targeted and measured. It's rubbish. I feel sorry for the Prime Minister. He believes the government has released resources, and they have, but he's got blockheads administering this stuff. I don't know how you define disturbing, but I've had several disturbing emails from the Federal Member for Macquarie, Susan Templeman. I call her the member for the Blue Mountains and basically a, a member for this beautiful part of the world. Now, it's no use playing politics on this stuff. The Blue Mountains, as you know, are Bilpin, Katoomba, Lura, Blackheath, Mount Victoria, Mount Tomah, beautiful parts of Australia. And what she's saying, she's the Labor, Federal Labor member for uh, the Blue Mountains, Macquarie, is identical to what the state member, Liberal, for Bega, is saying, Andrew Constance. He's been in the thick of the firefighting. As I said, Susan Templeman is Labor. But she's tried to work with the Federal Government. She spent a day in January with the recovery leader Andrew Colvin and this minister Little Proud. Susan Templeman wrote to me last Tuesday, told me that both had listened very closely to the distress, this is over a week ago, and the issues facing farmers and residents who'd lost their homes and businesses in the fires. And then she said this, and I quote, but I got to, I've got to a point where I feel like the wool is being pulled over our eyes. There were lots of good announcements, but it's not being matched by the facts on the ground. And here's the rub. Tuesday of last week, she wrote, last night, which would have been Monday night in Parliament, in Senate estimates, we learnt there is no national bushfire recovery fund established, as was promised by the Prime Minister in January. Now, it doesn't actually exist, she said. They call it notional. This is the fund that's meant to support families. Now, this is critical because Susan Templeman speaks for many of the victims of bushfires, for whom nothing, even now March 10, nothing has been done. I had a fellow ring me today, Clint. He and his community lost everything on November 13. How long ago is that? 13 weeks ago? Over three months. They have no phones. The Telstra performance in all of this has been appalling. I've spoken to Rebecca from Mogo on the south coast. She and a friend have taken to setting up an email address, greatermogofirerecovery.com. She tells me residents are looking at their burnt residences every day and this has a massive impact on mental health. She said there's no way they can remove the debris themselves as the tip won't accept burnt debris. But she says Lang O'Rourke, the contractor for the cleanup, can take burnt debris to the tip. And Rebecca asks, if they can take masses of debris to the tip whenever they actually get going, why can't residents? In other words, recovery efforts can't be community-led, even though there's no effort by anyone else. And she said to me, Rebecca, no politician, aid agency or government agency can say they know the impact of the fires or if the response has been appropriate because no one's collected the data. No welfare check's been done on residents to see the extent of the damage. Rebecca says there should be a systematic door knock to see who is without power, water, shelter, phone, access to mental health assistance. She says there's no water for most, but even if you had a water tank, the catchment areas are contaminated and a new tank takes three months. Well, back to Susan Templeman, the member for the Blue Mountains. She knows all about it and she joins us from Wentworth Falls in the middle of it all. Susan, thank you for your time. We should just say, firstly, you know all about this. In Thanks. 2013, you lost your own house, didn't you? I did. I was one of 200, uh, well, our family was one of 200 that lost their homes. But what was really different back then was it was a short, sharp fire. What the community is going through now is something that's going on for months and months and months with all the things that Rebecca, you just quoted her talking about, uh, the terrible impact on businesses, people losing their jobs and businesses really struggling and the victims not seeing the clean-up happening fast enough so that they can start thinking about the future. But hang on, fast enough. Now, you told me or you wrote to me to tell me about Mount Toma, where homes were burnt to the ground. You went there at the weekend, that's the day before yesterday, and not a single piece of debris has been removed. No, these are homes that built down, burnt down in December, and it looks exactly as it did the morning after the fire, except, of course, the bush is starting to regenerate, but the debris of their homes and their burnt cars and all the other stuff that's left there just is horrible to look at. 
uh, it's awful for the people who need that cleared so they can start thinking about do they rebuild, what do they rebuild, how do they rebuild. And it's awful for the neighbours who didn't lose their homes, uh, are facing terrible damage in their gardens and around their properties, but they have to drive past this every day. So the psychological uh, impact is profound. And, you know, I said to the recovery team back in January, the best thing you can do for people's mental health is get the debris cleared away fast. Susan, it's Peter Credlin here. I, I listened with interest to uh, complaints. I mean, I know the contract has been let, but the complaints that people say that it'll take, or they've been told, six months to clear the debris in their town, and, and the contractors are saying, you know, they're moving around the state. Well, why don't they put more contractors on? Correct. And obviously the intersection Correct. with coronavirus, we have a lot of people in casual work who are not guaranteed of work while their businesses and factories are standing down. So why wouldn't the fire recovery... Uh, removal specialists put put out a call for these yeah. casual workers to join their teams and just use as a way to lead the economy uh, through this tough uh, coronavirus. Yeah. Peter, Peter, just Susan, Peter's right there, right. isn't she? Why wouldn't someone be appointed, you go to the Blue Mountains, you go to Malakuta, you go to Batemans Bay and have all these contractors, you could do it in a couple of days. And local contractors are telling me they feel like they're being left out of the process. There are a lot of local skills that could be accessed. We're really missing the coordinated approach. It wasn't planned, so it's all been cobbled together in a, well, not even in a rush, but cobbled together. Remember, the fires really affected people in our region from about the 12th of November. It hit the Hawkesbury on the 12th of November and we lost, uh, uh, we were losing houses that week. So there's been a really long time to have a coordinated plan. The Prime Minister did say he'd do whatever it takes yeah. to get these communities back on their feet. We're just not seeing it on the ground. But Susan, you said uh, no national, you found out in the Parliament, no national bushfire recovery fund. I was flabbergasted to hear what came out of Senate estimates that the recovery agency itself is not an independent agency and that the $2 billion recovery fund, which there was a big headline about, is actually notional. Now, it makes you wonder, is that why it is so hard to see cash flowing mm. through to people whose businesses burnt down? Because that's the other struggle. The people who lost their businesses, I had one, one business owner say she's received half of the grant and now they want her to spend all the money and show receipts for it before she actually gets the grant money. And she said, you know, we don't have it. The no. bureaucracy, the paperwork, yeah. the hoops they're making people jump right. through, having been through a trauma, is really unfair. Yes, ask for the documentation. It was burnt, your dopes, along with everything else that they lost. Just one before we go, tells, um, Susan, how bad have Telstra been? Now, I've had communications from the people that you talked about at Mount Tomar, they have no landlines, and this was in uh, way back in November 15. We have had a lot of telecommunication struggles with towers uh, and also with landlines. It's been really disappointing. Now, we try and work really collaboratively with the agencies. We know there's a lot that they're trying to fix around the state, but it is unacceptable that people still have no landlines. They still don't have uh, a decent mobile reception. It's not like we have a fallback. When your landline goes up here, that's it. You, in a lot of parts of the Hawkesbury and Blue Mountains, that's your only communication. So you lose everything. Good. So we really need, governments really need to mm. ask the telecom communications companies, not ask them, but demand mm. that they step up and improve the service they provide in these really life and death times. Good on you. Thank you for what you're doing for your people. I can assure you from the correspondence I've had, they very much appreciate it. Between us, the three of us, I think we can tickle a few people up. What's happened to date has been disgraceful. It's good to talk to you. Good luck in all you do. And we've got to get people up. Be beautiful part of the world. Go up to the Blue Mountains, Allura, Blackheath and everywhere. Katoomba. It's lovely, isn't it's gorgeous. it? gorgeous. Yeah, Just yeah. Go, and, go and spend... That's Susan Templeman. She's done a hell of a job. But Just let me make a point, though. Th this idea that there is not a bushfire fund because there's not a named fund in the mm. budget, that is the way you do Commonwealth accounting. Otherwise, to have a named fund, you've got to get legislation through the Parliament. Of mm. course, this happened in December and sure. January and you wanted right. to get the money out. So, And I have to say, I'll be cheeky here, Labor... All major parties account this way. The money's there. It's just sitting in a line in the budget as opposed to a legislative But you fund. heard what she said. They're asking for receipts and accounts and all the rest of it. Now, you've got to trust people. OK, if 2% or 3% are going to cheat the system, let them go. But there's 98% who won't. I agree with that.